Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm Angus Hout. Uh, before we get to Ray and Sam, just a quick reminder, uh, be sure to check out the latest NHL odds with online. Let's try this again because that was awful. Be sure to check out the latest NHL odds with online sportsbook Betway. Ray and Sam, how are we feeling after game three, the overtime loss? I'm exhausted and it's a full day later. Uh, that was... That was a lot to go through, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of surreal, like like going down in the game and just seeing the comeback and just with how with Morrissey being out, it's just like you can't like you can't believe that like they were able to come back from that deficit in the third period and then just like to be on the wrong side of that it just feels so like tiring and kind of just like I still can't believe that it happened. Yeah, like it was Almost surreal once that fourth goal happened and I was like at the whiteout party and just like the uh, the electricity disappeared from the air is the only way I could describe it. And it was just that melancholy set over the city. So I'm, I wonder how many people left the game like this. The street party is one thing. I wonder how many people left the game after the second period just like oh this is over like it's a saturday afternoon i have stuff to do i wonder if anyone left I and was, just like missed out on one of the most exciting hockey games of the year i was this close to get uh walking back to my place and then driving down to f uh ig field to go watch valor after the <laughs> i actually i actually did have some friends leave the street party to go to the valor game yesterday yeah so they were in the they were in the uh one in true north square though which i heard was a little more like corporate not as not as much yeah. fun. like Chipman was there and all the wags and families were there at one i guess probably before the game yeah yeah I, I, i'd rather just go hang out with the common folks and go hang out with the wags and mark Chipman. <laughs> although i'd need all of those people to start touching the puck near dale howard chuck or the the puck on dale howard chuck's statue because apparently there's some good luck in that so everyone go touch that puck <laughs> it's our good luck charm that's what i'm believing in if that's what we're coming down to i think we might be in trouble <laughs> listen man it's whatever's gonna work and you need it to work at this point because uh, two down to one to vegas like has winnipeg ever come back from a series like when they're down by one game i was like racking my brain i don't think they've ever come back from a series Hey, I, uh, we haven't had a lot of series to come back for. Like we've, what's this other like series that we've won? It, there's only been Nashville hmm. and Minnesota and Edmonton and Edmonton. So one was a sweep. One we were up to one, and the other we we like won yeah. two of the first. I think the the. Like the Nashville, we just went back and forth. We were never down a game in that series. I don't think we've ever been down. Yeah, we've never been down a game and won the series. Yeah, so it's like the odds just aren't in our favor to begin with. And, you know, as of right now, it has not in our favor because the Jets have never done this. They've never come back. Yeah, you do, you never have until you do, though. Yeah, yeah. Exa- I guess so. You can't be down. On First the time for everything. Ever. So <laughs> we're due. We're due. We're due for a comeback <laughs> win here. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, like I mean, did you kind of feel like the there was a continuation of game two into the beginning of game three? I like I missed the first 10 minutes because I was walking from my place down to the white out party. So I kind of missed the first 10 minutes. I almost wonder if there was a little too much hype. Like the it's a lot of the players on the team's first time being in like a true Winnipeg whiteout. Um, so I wonder if there was almost a little too much hype around it. Cause the guys definitely came out a bit. So, I mean, the first two periods were just rough. Mm-hmm. We, uh, the jets need to figure out how to string a whole game together. Cause I mean, game two, they were dominant in the first period. And as soon as Vegas started scoring, they kind of unraveled game three, they ended up getting it back together and, and putting together a third period. But if you don't go down four one, you probably win that game. So yeah. I just think it's a matter of, and I, I guess that's a cliche and like, you're kind of thinking, no shit. Like, of course you need to put together a full <laughs> yeah. playoff game, but I, I do think that's the Jets biggest issue. Like if they put together a full game, I don't think Vegas beats them. No, but yeah. Yeah. yeah I was going to say like that first, like 10 minutes of the game, especially to go down in the, like go down mm-hmm. in the first like five minutes and get scored on. 
I think that's one thing the Jets have really struggled with is like when they get scored on first, they're always having to play from behind. We saw this from the regular season where when they have to play from behind, they're already kind of like they're not almost out of it, but like they already have to play catch up and it's our it's like only five minutes into the game. So I feel like if the Jets score first in like any game, like they have a pretty good chance of winning the game. Just looking at game one, like they had the first goal and then they were able to build off that momentum and just kind of play a really good game so I feel like getting that first goal is just so important in this series yeah well I would almost argue getting the first two because like or did did we get the first two in game two or no we got the no no, I think it was just the first one but like get yourself that buffer so you don't need to start scrambling don't need to get away from your game kind of well, if you take control of the game in that sense, Vegas has to almost play to you rather than you having to chase and try to play to Vegas's game. That's when things got opened up. We started taking penalties. Eichel started putting in power play goals. So I just, yeah, I think getting off to that good start is super important, obviously, because then you you can play your game rather than having to adjust and try to be all offensive. And then you're starting to be sloppy in your own end. Vegas might have a Jack Eichel scoring power play goals, but they don't have an Adam Lowry doing what he's doing right now. What a start to the play. He's only the third player in Jets history to have a goal streak of three in the playoffs. The other one, I, I only saw one of the other ones. It was Line A Classic. Uh, because Line A started with three, three, a three game goal streak and Lowry obviously has started the playoffs with that. So yeah, he could, I think he would break the record if he gets one in, in game four. <laughs> what a guy. Like I, I put it out on TikTok yesterday. Do you think like, like obviously the, the ideal choice is going to be Josh Morrissey, but would you personally pick Adam Lowry to be the next captain over Morrissey just due to what he's done and like really all season long, I think he's kind of earned his spot. I, I think he's earned to be in the conversation, but I think it's it's Lowry or it's uh Morrissey's team. Morrissey. If if all like if Morrissey hadn't had the year he had, did you guys I guess Angus you probably wouldn't have raided. Did you catch the pregame uh piece that Elliot Friedman did on Morrissey? Uh I don't think I caught that. No. Oh my god, I was fighting back tears. It was incredible just talking about his dad and and the struggle he went through like during the pandemic season and and just even some of the guys, I can't remember exactly who it was. It might have been Lowry they were talking to. And he was like, I don't think this is all that Morrissey has. Like, I think he's got more in him in the future. And just the fact he's locked up for like six more years or five more years after this or something. I, I think Lowry has another three. So I, I just think Morrissey's Morrissey's the guy that's that's really earned that C. You've seen it all year. Um in games where the Jets have been down, there's been times where Morrissey just took over. Mm-hmm. I'm tr- I'm thinking of the one specific one where he went to the crowd, like yeah, after he like, scored the yeah. second goal of the game, he went to the crowd and was just pumping him up. From that moment on, I was like, this this is Morrissey's team. Well, at one point, we thought that was going to be the turnaround point for mm-hmm. the Jets when uh, things were going real south for him. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I get it. And like, Lowry, or Morrissey is the the easy corporate choice. Like you can sell way more jerseys of Lowry with the C on it than you would with Adam Lowry. I just, I personally would, if I got to make the choice, it would be Morrissey or uh, it'd be Lowry. Sorry, how many times do I need to screw up those names? I I don't think there's a wrong choice there. No, yeah, between those two. Yeah, that's what I was gonna mention. Like, it's not a bad thing that there's two people that you kind of are able to see as your captain. Where Morrissey is like a like a rock on the blue line, a number one emerging defenseman. And then you got Lowry, who's a really big body can just gives it all for his team. So it's not really a bad thing where you have two guys where like equal parts, you could say Morrissey could be the captain, but then you could also say Lowry's the captain. So it's like both are willing to put everything on the line for their team to win. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good problem to have. It's better than going, who the hell's going to be our captain <laughs> next year? Right. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I there's also the chance. I don't think it's going to happen, but there's a chance they continue without a captain. Yeah, there's also that as well. I mean, Calgary's doing it. There's a handful of teams that are doing it. Yeah, so. Bones like his likes his lead by committee type of stuff, yeah. and and making a captain kind of takes that away to a degree. But I I think it either of those guys aren't going to be hot headed. If no. they get named captain, it's not going to be, oh, look at me. They're still just all about the team. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like both of those guys are absolute beauties where they not both WHL guys. And like, you can go through the credentials of both of them and the, the leadership is right there. Uh, talking about Josh Morrissey, how screwed are the Jets without Jomo and Ehlers, you know, for the rest of the series? Yeah. We don't necessarily know Ehlers isn't coming. Yeah. Isn't playing yeah okay. Series. It's been just such a weird. It has been. Yeah. Like, why, why is he going out practicing <laughs> every day in full contact? And then it's like, no. Nah. So I, I did hear Bones talk about that. Um, he was basically saying, like, yes, he's practicing fully with the team, but the team's aware of the injury and they're definitely not, like, going to hit him. And in playoff hockey, you're going to get hit. So I think it's more about, like, he can do that with the players having that awareness but you're not going to throw him in if you think he's just going to get re-injured. Yeah. Yeah, totally fair. Um, but like without Josh Morrissey, I mean, I think this team can kind of weather the storm without Josh Morrissey for potentially the three games that the Jets need to come back. I mean, they- I mean, we did see it yesterday. Like Morrissey went out so early mm-hmm. and guys had to step up and play big minutes in a double overtime game. Mm-hmm. And they were there. I think it's like, it's an issue. Without a doubt, you lose your most important player, arguably, other than Connor Hellebuck. That's an issue. But we'll we'll see who steps up. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be Stanley. Even though no one, like, that moves Pionk into kind of that having to play offensive defenseman role. So yeah. it, it'll be interesting to see. I wouldn't even hate seeing Copa, B, Kappa, Bianca, whatever, Copa, whatever. Kappa you you <laughs> want to see go. the other Kyle kick around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, personally, I'd go with Kappa Bianco. Like, I'd, Stanley's fine and all, but we don't need another big, you know, quote unquote mean guy because he's big. It's, you know, he's yeah. not that guy for us right now. Kappa Bianco has shown us that he can kind of get some goals for us. He's just that $5 yeah. DVD you find at Walmart. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't think we're fully screwed without Morrissey, but I think it's going to be like a kind of lead by committee. Like, all the defensemen are going to have to kind of pull the whole weight of the defense where with Morrissey being in the lineup, Morrissey can make up for the fact that if someone has a poor game because he can make up for that game. And we saw it with that double overtime game with Neil Pionk just like becoming basically like a demon. He had three assists, like I think three primary assists on all the goals in the comeback and then played the second and most amount of time on ice in Jets history with like 41 minutes so it's like it's not going to be like that again but I feel like Pionk is going to be basically leaned on very heavily and it's going to be basically if Pionk can step up and kind of mitigate how much they need to step up for Morsi, I feel like we have a good chance still just based on how they played without Morsi that entire game and how they were able to kind of weather the storm of the like the game and then be able to come back. Absolutely. I, I also just think all of the defensemen stepped up there, like moving. I like the move of putting DeMello and Dylan together um, and then kind of just rotating the other three. I thought they, I, I don't know. I, I thought they all, everyone stepped up and really, uh, really put out their best effort there yesterday, especially on the back end. Yeah. Um, uh... Man, you gotta love Neil Pionk for like taking that step up. Like he, he's one of those guys that we've tried to run out of the city before. And when he's hurt, he's not playing his best hockey. But when that guy's at a hundred percent, or when he's feeling it, that guy can make or break the Jets' games. Same thing with Mark Shifley. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I think I didn't love Shifley's game yesterday. No, I didn't. There, I've, there I seemed, haven't loved the last two games from Shifley. Yeah, it's, there it's, seems it's, to be a lot of times where he almost looks disinterested, and yeah. it's like, dude. It's the playoffs. If you're not interested now, how do you get up for any game? Mm-hmm. So I and I get that's probably not the case, but it just looks like that. And it would be nice to see him put in a little more effort. I know he scored, but there's there's a lot of times where he's out there. There like the first two periods when we were getting kind of killed, Shifley had no shots. Yeah, and it's it's like you can't as a guy who's supposed to be the star, you just can't have that. You need yeah. that guy to be able to step up when the team's going down a bit. You have to step your game up to show everyone else like, hey, we got this. Yeah, I well, think I, that was really 
uh, in the third period too with the adjustment that was made where they bumped Shifley from that first line down. And it really kind of sparked something in him, kind of like a wake up call saying like, hey, you're not like being good enough to warrant where you're playing right now. So he went down to the second line with with Wheeler and he, like it really kind of ignited like a fire in him in, in a way where it may have been short term. I guess we'll see with the next game how we how he plays that game. But I feel like Shifley really has like a fire under him where he like. He kind of like got called out by Bones in a way where Bones acknowledged that he wasn't being good enough with where he was. So I feel like next game is going to be pivotal, and I feel like Mark Shifley is going to have to play a big factor in that. He just needed his buddy wheels back. Yeah. He really does. That I love, I love when Domestikov's playing center there. We have two of our three right-handed forwards on the wing of the same line. <laughs> it's an absurd lineup, but it, it worked. And my God... It can also, like, I know we wanted more at the deadline. What unbelievable moves by Shovel Day off. Right? That guy does you know lose. Is so good. His hit on, uh, Mar- was it Marsha's show? I think so, yeah. Right by the bench. Oh, beautiful. So and then Nemestikov is always going hard. He's playing second line center right now for a fourth round pick. Sign me up every day. I, I think that was... Like, yeah, it might not have been as many moves as we were hoping, but the moves he made were unbelievable. And it wasn't like they were big, sexy moves either. Like, I remember how disappointed we were. Like, oh, cool, Nino Niederreiter and Nemastikov, cool. And it's like Shevel Dayoff kind of lost the bag on it. And it's like all of a sudden you're like, yeah, no, this is this was brilliant. These were brilliant moves. Um, and he kept all of our top prospects, which yep. is looking real good now that Lambert's just lighting it up. Cool. And he also like a second and a fourth. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> what, what are, yeah. What are we really losing there? Yeah. Know, the potential of a second rounder is there, but. But whatever. we get Nino for another year. Yeah, exactly. So and you I mean, could move him for arguably a second rounder. Knowing Shevel <laughs> Dayoff, that's exactly what's going to happen. Actually, he's going to somehow swindle a first out of it. <laughs> oh man yeah shovel day off doesn't lose and every time we critique him he gets fired up and he makes some good moves so good for kevin shovel day off hopefully we get to see these guys for a few more like another couple series because i and also i'd love to see them back next well we know nino is unless he gets moved but yeah. i wouldn't mind seeing the mastikov back left next year I, <laughs> I really like his game he's got that playoff experience like sign me up where where would you like manage to get Perfetti out onto the ice though? If you have like a full healthy squad with Nemestikov kicking around, I think Nemestikov stays at that that Stuff second that. line center spot for and sure. You just let Perfetti just like get real good and on the third line, or I I don't know. It's yeah. it's tough. I mean, imagine how much Lowry would score if he had Perfetti on his wing instead of uh, Appleton. <laughs> But Appleton's been playing his heart yeah. out too. Like he's been I know playing he a perfect. I, I, I'm happy with. I think Mendelinen, who I've been super critical of this year, has been playing great in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Oh, he man. has a few. Like he's not the most offensive player in the world, but he goes hard. And I, I do think he what is a game that translates to, to the playoffs. Sh- or, uh, to Stenland there the other night, like a what a pass. play! Yeah, and a great finish by Stenland. I think Gus has played well coming in after like sitting a lot and playing on the moose, like. No, he hasn't been in the moose. He's just been sitting lots. Yeah, well, he was injured there for a while. And yeah, he's just had an unfortunate year at it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I kind of missed that line of uh, Gus, Stenland, and Manaline. And I think it was like that was a fun line to watch back earlier in the season. Well, that's that's no, Stenland was down on the moose. No, there, there was a very, I thought there was a brief time where they had like the, the Swede line. Middle s- finish. Finish. Okay, yeah. then who is our other? Who's our other Swede? We have three uh, uh, AJF. AJF. That was the Swede line. That was my. That was the line I like. <laughs> but like the fact that AJF was like, you know, almost in the line. Was he? Did he get in the lineup on game two, or was he almost there? Uh not not in the playoffs. No, no, no that's played. what I thought. It's been Gus the whole time. Yeah, but like I mean, he almost had a shot. That would I still kind of want to see him fly out there once, but. I'm I I don't think anyone's losing their spot right now in, until obviously uh, Ehlers is back. Mm-hmm. If I guess I would say, yeah. 
Um, okay, lots of folks have been complaining about the referees in the playoffs this year. Not many Jets fans so much. Uh, how would you rate the referees in this series? I I think there's some inconsistencies that kind of piss me off, but I don't think it's been like over the top. I don't love like I, you you have to call that penalty on Dubois in the double overtime, but there's guys getting away with murder in overtime, and then you finally decide to call one it's like call them all or don't call any or like find a middle ground but you can't just pick and choose Mm -hmm. yeah i would say the refs haven't been terrible in this series like you wouldn't say that like the refs like cost the game (laughs) but like the refs aren't perfect like you're kind of it's kind of just nitpicking kind of penalties that would be called in a regular season but then some aren't and then and then the trip with dubois like that's a trip like Sure. You you can't argue that that shouldn't be a penalty. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, the refs haven't been atrocious, and, like, I feel like to blame the refs on any game in this series is just kind of immature or something like that. Just, a cop-out? Yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's a blame. You can blame the them on calls. Yeah. You can get mad at calls, but, yeah, I, I don't think they've affected the outcome of a game. Yeah. No, unless you're Oilers fans or Leafs fans, then <laughs> the refs are out there to screw you. Yeah, I do like the one thing I, I've never really liked is when there's a big scrum bunch of guys and then one team gets the extra penalty out of it. Like the the one where Shifley got the extra penalty or Dubois, whoever they the, both of them went to the box. I, I just I look at that scrum and I go, how the hell do you pick out two guys from one team and one from the other? Like Shifley swung and missed at the guy and then got clocked. I just like that. And then they score on the power play. So it it sucks. I, I don't love that in a big scrum unless it's it's really blatant. And it, same thing happened. Petra Angelo in game two, he right. came out of a scrum as the only as the only penalty. So it's like I, I, I think those should be a little more like come out one from each team or two from each team and move on. Don't give either team a power play unless it's really blatant. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like, well, I think it was Chandler. Was it Chandler Stevenson? Or maybe it was uh, Petrangelo that, like, just jumped on Wheeler's yeah. back. Like, it was like, what are you doing, man? This is not yeah. a game here. Like, don't be jumping yeah. on guys' backs. I guess they're, they're usually taking the third guy in. But what are you going to do? Not protect your teammate? Yeah. Well, yeah, you so got it. So I just, I, I think those should more often than not be, like, just even out. Yeah. Thoughts on uh, Morgan Barron and his 75 stitches and still rolling out? What a legend. <laughs> what a guy. My goodness. We got to, you know how the old stadium had the uh, the picture of the queen? We got to get Morgan Barron's face with a big old scar. Really fire up the crowds. That would be amazing. I, I, would, I would chip at least $10 into that project. So Mark Chipman, if you're listening, I'll give you 10 bucks. Get our uh, big old photo of uh, Barron up. Uh, we got a couple of questions from Ray, and these are really solid. So thank you so much, Ray. You're you're just a no one of a kind here. And also, let's uh, shout out our good friends at Betway, and be sure to check out the latest NHL odds with online sportsbook Betway. Have you guys checked out Betway? No. Well, uh, they not. aren't. Oh, they wait, not you're in, in Ontario. They're they're not in Manitoba. <laughs> yeah, I I I still don't understand why I still need to talk about these guys because we can't bet with Betway here. But <laughs> whatever, it's if they want me to say go check out Betway because you're in Ontario, Ray. Go check out Betway <laughs> <laughs> or check out JetsNation.ca and uh, give us a follow on socials. That'd be really cool. Or you know, subscribe to the podcast. All that good stuff. Um, your first question, Ray. Um. If you were Bones, what is the message you'd be telling the room with how they've played so far? I think I'd be continuing with the let's put together a complete game. Let's come out strong and play our own game. And I just like I don't know what happens. It's it happened a lot in the Morris or in the uh, Maurice era. But there's so often the Jets would be so good in the first period. And then they just come out flat in the second you've got to be able to figure that out between periods. Like what did, what was said between the second and the third period yesterday that couldn't have been said between the first and the second, like, well, we need to figure that out. So, and same with like in, in game two, what was said or not said between the first and the second that the jets just completely went to sleep. So I, I just think like they need to, 
get the team going between periods better. Yeah, I think with kind of how the momentum kind of shifted in that third period, like I don't think Bones would be that disappointed with how they played because like we hit the post in overtime too. So at the end of the day, this game could have turned around and been a 5-4 victory for the Jets. So I don't think he's very upset with how they played, but I think he just wants to see that third period type of play for the entire game and kind of have that complete effort and kind of have that entire team kind of have that team mentality where they don't have to fight from behind and just have that complete game. It's just important. I concur with both of you. You just need to play a full 60 minutes there, boys. Let's go. And I mean, like the, the hustles there, like you know, the, to start that game, you know, I was listening to it and, you know, Brendan Dillon's out there fighting 54 seconds in. You love to see that kind of stuff. And I really thought the Jets were going to be in that game with that. I thought that hit was, what did you guys think of that Colsar hit on Lowry? I missed it. So I can't yeah. say anything. I think it it felt a little late. Um, Lowry had, he was coming around the net, had a guy on him already played the puck up the boards. He and the guy were still together. And then Colsar came out of nowhere and rocked him. It was on the edge in a regular season game though. I think that is called interference 10 times out of 10. It, it was a little late, but I think in the playoffs, they'll just let that go. Oh, and I'm happy Dylan stepped up. Yeah. 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 I think well, with a hit like that, like, like, sure. It might be a little bit late, but like, I don't think the the refs really want to call like all the penalties that would be regular season penalties. So absolutely. I that, so I think that's kind of like it benefits both teams because there's probably been some times where the Jets might have done something where it would have been a penalty in the regular season too. So I feel like it kind of goes both ways where it kind of benefits you sometimes and that goes against you sometimes. So it's kind of hard to argue that like something in the playoffs should be a penalty because the other team can just say, oh, what about all these other plays that could have been penalties too? So I think the refs have done a good job where like that late hit on Lowry, sure, it could have been called a penalty, but there's probably been other plays that could have been called penalties against us. So I think it's been pretty consistent with with the refs so far on that kind of those type of plays. A hundred percent. Yeah. As, as long as that, again, as long as the consistency stays, like call the blatant, blatant ones that are going to affect a play but be consistent with the rest of the calls. Like if you're not going to call any of them, then truly don't. Yeah. Yeah. Consistency is key. And I think that's, what's going to keep fans the happiest. And so far, I think the refs have been mostly fair with this series. Um, who's someone that stood up for you in the first three games, excluding Hellebuck. I'm taking the first answer. It's Adam Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's cheap. Didn't even give us the chance. I get to host, and every now and then I get to cheat it and make it easy <laughs> on myself. Yeah, I mean Adam Lowry, the goals, the fact that he's out there hitting, and I mean he's taking on some big guys out there in Vegas. So nothing but respect for Adam Lowry and my next captain of this team. <laughs> I think I know who Ray's gonna say, so I'll let you go next, Ray. Oh, I was gonna let you go first because I have two in mind. So okay. Um I like I I want to say uh Sandberg I thought he stepped up really well yesterday obviously the end of the game but the other one I will say is Nino I think Nino has been flying around he's been absolutely hammering guys um and he I mean he got the boys going yesterday with the second goal to start the third period so I'll uh, I'll go with Nino as as a, a difference maker um, I was going to say Neil Pionk, but I think we've already talked about him enough. So I'm going to say someone like a little unconventional, but it's kind of just like one of the best Jets forwards. And I'm going to say Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor had some really good looks, especially on that, that kind of inside move on that kind of breakaway chance. And he had like, like so many shots in all the games. And Vegas is a team that blocks a lot of shots. They have like three people in the top five of block shots this year. So getting shots on goal and having so many from Kyle Connor, it's like you're getting pucks to the net. And I feel like he's done a really good job of kind of like driving some of the offense and just being able to create scoring chances on a team that doesn't allow a lot of traffic to get through to the goalie. I'm just yeah, like... absolutely. I, I thought Pionk was the guy you were, uh, you were yeah. going to say there. 
I was going to, but I, th I think we tooted his horn <laughs> a, a good bit before. So, All right. So last night, Kyle Connor had eight shots. And I mean, like, also, we got to remember, the Jets had, what, nine shots in the first two periods? 11 shots, maybe? Like, it was a rough first two periods. And, like, Kyle Connor, when he steps up, he steps up. It was like eight shots. Uh, so eight shots in game two as well. But he had all those shots in the first half of the game. Like the dude has just been on shots. fire. I yeah, you were absolutely right, nailing the hammer on the head with that one. Like just got to put some of those in. Yeah, yeah, he got well, one already. Yeah, but I mean, after like again, like that was early in the season too. When wasn't he? Didn't he have like almost a hundred shots and two goals? Yeah, yeah and one was an empty netter. Right? Yeah, so you know, maybe maybe not a hundred, but if he could, you know, hit shot 30 and then just start putting them all in the back of the net I, i'd be okay with that Hitting might have opened me. the floodgates now yeah oh yeah well who opened up the floodgates the other night i kind of, i talked about it on twitter i think it was like neil pionk wasn't like he's had so many points lately too like he had three yesterday yeah yeah like yeah like there's guys stepping up all over this team it just just got to get the wins and like the, the jets can do it i firmly believe that this team still has it in them just yeah it's it's gonna be really? tough you you lose your best player arguably uh you're still short of really high scoring like skilled forward it's gonna be tough mm -hmm. we just miraculously need like brian little to come off long-term ir even though he's been traded to or his <laughs> rights have been traded we just need to circumvent the cap like vegas did oh really need to circumvent that cap that that's a rule that straight up needs to change at this point. Like it was kind of, they funny. need to figure that out. Yeah. Like it was kind of funny that first year when it was $18 million and whatever, but now it's just like, everyone's doing it. Like you should be punished for it. I I don't want to have you bring in a $9 million guy last minute. Well, it's the, the guys miraculously getting healthy. The Kucherov one bothered me way more than the stone one did, even though it didn't affect the jets, but like, how are they always ready for game one? Just, oh, they, they weren't ready the game before. They couldn't sit out one more game. Nope, they're they're all of a sudden better. I think it's absolutely absurd. Yeah. Yeah, like, you, there should be a rule that you have to, like, unless, well, I guess you can't even, like, what are you going to do? Question 15 doctors and be like, well, one of them said no, so, or one of them said you could or couldn't do it, so... I don't know. I yeah. and that's even like oh, with the doctor said he was ready, but the player didn't feel ready. Maybe like I don't know. It's it's there's a hard cap for a reason, and teams are just taking advantage of that. Yeah, like what? Can we just call up old Tibu and just be like, hey man, you want to suit up for a game? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Boolin, you good to go? I I don't think goalies are issue. No. Although oh, not at Holbeck all. hasn't had his best series. If we're like the last couple of games. He hasn't been the best. Well, if we're being honest, Brassois almost outplayed him a couple times. So yeah, it's it it's strange that Connor Hellebuck is losing to Laurent Brassois. Should not it be hurts. this way. It really does. So, uh, but I mean, they're good buddies. So, like, hopefully, they have good fun <laughs> with it. But uh, yeah, this is not the time for Connor Hellebuck to be losing to Vegas. Um, yeah. Uh, so who for the final question here, uh, who is someone that needs to really bring it up in the next couple of games? I I think we just touched on it. I yeah, think sorry, Hellebuck I realized that. Yeah. His, no worries. I think I think just that you need Hellebuck at their top four or at his top form to be the best team you can be. Um, there's been a couple times he's kicked out rebounds where I thought that like normal Connor Hellebuck isn't kicking out that rebound and they just get banged in. So obviously not the Jets' biggest issue, but I do think Connor Hellebuck, if Connor Hellebuck has his best game yesterday, we, we aren't down 4-1. Yeah. I was going to choose Hellebuck when I made that question because I felt like he wasn't, like, he's been good, but I don't think he's been, like, the Hellebuck that is, like, I don't think he's been quite good enough, but he's still been Hellebuck so I'm going to choose Mark Shifley on this one because when you're a top six player and your main kind of bread and butter is being able to score goals and just drive offense I feel like he just hasn't been up to par of where you want him to be he's only scored one goal a power play goal in the three games and I feel like I think if we want to win this series we're, we're going to have to see more from Mark Shifley and just 
see him more engaged because Shifley is an important part of this team and to the success that it has. Like even though Hellebuck is such a good goalie, I think that having the offense from the top six is just as important because Hellebuck can't score goals. You need goals to win games and when Shifley is on the ice, you want him scoring goals. So Shifley is someone that really needs to pick it up in game four. And I feel like if he picks it up, I feel like he could just carry that momentum into just the entire series. And just if he scores another one and just continues that momentum, I feel like he could definitely kind of go on a run of offense and being a key guy to drive the offense. Yeah, I think I think Shifley is a really good pick there just because it, it's true. He probably hasn't played his best hockey the last three games and that's a guy you just need to be at his best to win a series. I, so Hellbuck game two made that spectacular save right at the start. And then he took that shot right to the face that cut his eyebrow. I wonder, like, I don't know where goalie masks sit, but I wonder if that's kind of bugging him or something, having that split eyebrow. Cause I, I don't think he's been quite the same since, since he took that shot to the face. It was like, right after that and it was close to the start of game two yeah i know um I, there's a chance he could have had like a very minor concussion like not enough that you're like oh i'm worried about connor hellebuck just <clears throat> enough that something's been rattled in there that he's not at 1000 percent. but and it's just taking that, that extra second to react or whatever millisecond yeah. to react which makes a difference in the nhl exactly yeah. um <clears throat> You guys both suck because you took both of my answers. So I have no one else to say for this. So, I mean, be creative. Guys. Come on, pull uh, one out. Uh, Mason Appleton could be better. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've seen him slip a few times on the ice. I just, you know, where where's the goals at Mason Appleton? You're a $3 million player. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Is Mark, Appleton making three mil? I believe so. I think it's three one. No, three, I think two? it's 2.1. Two. Oh, yes, you're right. I don't know why he's I got like, there's no way they're paying Mason <laughs> Appleton three. I, yeah, though. for some reason I had locked down in my head that I was making three. I was like, that feels wrong, but oh, whatever. Um, but going back to Mark Shifley there, Mark Shifley is an interesting player. His ripple effect on this team is massive. Like he's the one guy that if he has a great game, everyone has a great game. If Mark Shifley is just off a little, it strangely affects the entire team. And it's it, it is really frustrating that. It's one guy that can affect the entire mood of that locker room. Yeah, and I guess I'll add one more in since you kind of gave a little cop out answer. Um, I'm gonna add it. <laughs> I'm gonna add in Dubois. Um, again, like he's a big driver of offense, but I think what we need to see from him is a little bit more disciplined and kind of being able to play like a full kind of. 200 foot game and kind of not like he took two penalties in that game three and i was gonna say he's gotta stay out of the box yeah. and i don't think it's gonna be the last time that dubois takes a penalty in this series and it's most likely gonna be a similar play to what happened or even like a fight or something like that or something like that so i think dubois is gonna be key because you want dubois on the ice for as much as you can because he's also a big driver of offense and a big reason why we're able to have sustained offensive zone time. So having Dubois on the ice and rather in the box is something that you kind of want to have him on the ice. So making sure that Dubois is on the ice and he's disciplined will be a big thing in winning a game. And I mean, Vegas's power play with Eichel and Stone out there is so good. So yeah. you really got to gotta stay out of the box because they're just going to keep... Yeah putting that puck in the net. Yeah, and with that, like Dubois, like if Dubois takes penalties, like sure, our penalty kill is quite good and was able to kill off a good amount of penalties. Getting penalties is just inviting Vegas to put on all their best players. And you saw, and we saw with Connor Hellebuck's insane glove save on that power play. It's like, sure, like you have an insane penalty killer and you have a world-class goalie, but power plays are there for a reason you get a five on four and it's just you can't stop them all and even if they don't score i mean getting two full minutes of zone time is going to swing the momentum and yeah if if it's a really good kill like they get a ton of chances it might swing the momentum a bit back in our way but it yeah. just kills any momentum you have being on the penalty kill 
Yeah, I'd say like the the big difference is like the penalty, the first penalty that Dubois took in game three with the trip on Mark Stone, like those are probably a pretty good penalty to take because Mark Stone was all alone in front of the net and could have ended it before even going to overtime. So sure, like taking a penalty when it like could benefit where they don't score a goal on a premier scoring chance, sure, but then taking a tripping penalty in the second 170 overtime, feet from your net <laughs> yeah but like i think the one good thing about that penalty at the end of the game was or the the end of the regulation was it stopped the premier scoring chance and it allowed into the first ot with that kill it generated a lot of momentum for the jets being able to start the game shorthanded and kill it off and just kind of just carry that but like being able to carry momentum from a penalty kill is very hard because you're putting your team shorthanded for a reason. So, and giving them a chance on the power play is just not really what you really want to do unless you absolutely have to. I also think like you score with 21 seconds left. You can't let Mark Stone be that yeah. alone in front. Like you've got to come out hotter after that just to like make sure your team isn't uh, put in that situation. So I, I think even taking a timeout after that Lowry goal may have been a good idea because guys were all jacked up, but you still have 20 seconds of, of game time to play. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, what really sucks is the jets power play was doing so well and or a penalty kill is doing so well in games uh, one and two, and they killed everything off. And then yeah, game three, they allowed to win. And the, the jets power play is just, just not great right it, now you need healers and morrissey for that matter it's surprising like i was just i'm just looking at the stats right now and they're hitting like one a game and it's like one out of four so like 25 percent isn't terrible on the but on it's the power how power. many of those have been the second power play oh yeah but i mean the power play goal is this power play goal who cares yeah but scores it? true but the first power play needs to figure something out like yeah, they're getting well, so much more ice time on the man advantage than the second power play is, but they're scoring less. But I mean, you could say the exact same thing about the top six as a whole. The top true. six should that is, that is true at a higher rate than they are. It's, you know, thank God for Adam Larry and his squad because <laughs> they're doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, I totally agree. Like, is Ehlers ever going to end up on the first power play anyways? Like, yeah, he was before he got hurt. Was yeah. he? Yep. Okay, but yeah, I mean, like finally, but, they finally put him up there. But then, but then he get hurt, gets hurt, and then you know it takes six months before he's back on that top power play unit for whatever reason. And I'm not yeah. saying yeah. Bones is dumb, but sometimes I'm just curious what's going on in his mind not having Ehlers up there. Like, sometimes I think coaches need to get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes the thing that makes sense is the right thing to do. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just put the. The power play can't get into the zone. Why don't we put the best zone entry player on the team on the power play? Imagine that. Yeah. Crazy what happens when you actually get a zone entry rather, rather than... Rather than Blake Wheeler to just cough it up. <laughs> <laughs> mind you, his the one I was thinking... The one I had in my mind there apparently his stick broke on. So I was mad, heard his stick broke, felt bad. But still, there's, there's a lot of times where... And Cal Connor too, for that matter. Lots of turnovers on the power play yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the power play has been like like pretty poor to be honest. Like I think that's like they can really see the missing of dealers because the Jets really have like a lot of just stuff on the perimeter. There's not a lot of movement. So I feel like dealers is gonna be pivotal in not only just like five on five play, but I think he will be like the major factor in kind of creating offense on the power play. Let's just pray he's back. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would that's going to be such an addition if he's back tomorrow wow could you imagine like i yeah i would feel so much better with this team having nikki ehlers kicking around again um yeah well that's all i've got you guys got anything else today oh, no go yeah. jets go that's what we're feeling um all right uh before we get out of here uh make sure you check out jetsnation.ca go check out all of our social medias uh you know, we're out there. And if you see me booting around the whiteout party on Monday night, feel free to say hi. I will definitely come and tag along with you. Please don't ask me to go drinking with you after that. I will. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> um, that being said, I'm Angus. How no, you can just say no to that, right? I can, but I, I have an issue with saying no. 
it's like <laughs> fun people. And then it's all of a sudden it's 5 a.m. And I'm like, oh, well, it's home time. <laughs> but people have jobs. So, you know, hopefully they, you know, shut it down nice and early at uh, Canada Life on Monday. Um, I'm Angus Hout. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Sam? Yeah, it's uh, Sam Brownell Radio on Instagram, S Brownell 12 on Twitter. And Ray. Uh, yeah, it is uh, Brad Lambert is him or Ray Howe, Ray dot Howe. And yeah, let's hope that the Jets can come back in game four. Not just game four. We're talking the, <laughs> the rest whole of the series. series. Yeah. We're, going, we're winning it's this a process. in six. Or actually, that's a lie. We're going to seven. But I believe in game seven and the Jets are going to take it. So beautiful. Go Jets go game seven. I believe in us. Have yourselves a great week. Hopefully we're talking about more playoff hockey come next week and we're not sad. Go Jets go. Go Jets go. 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 Don't make us sad, please. (laughs) All right.